Hello financial fans, welcome back to another stock analysis. Today we'll be covering Restaurant Brands International stock ticker QSR. Restaurant Brands International, or RBI, is a multinational fast food holding company that owns and operates several well-known restaurant chains, including Burger King, Tim Hortons, and Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen. The company was formed in 2014 as a result of the merger between Burger King and Tim Hortons, and it later acquired Popeye's in 2017. RBI's primary business model is to oversee the operations of these restaurant chains, which includes developing new menu items, marketing campaigns, and strategies for expansion. The company has over 20, 27,000 restaurants in more than 100 countries around the world, making it one of the largest quick service restaurant companies in the world. In addition to its operational responsibilities, RBI also provides support services to its franchisees, such as real estate and supply chain management. The company has a global network of franchise partners who operate its restaurants, allowing it to expand its brand presence without incurring the full cost of opening and operating new locations. The company is currently sitting at a market cap of $20.5 billion, and their revenue in 2022 was sitting at $6.2 billion, and the dividend yield is currently sitting at 3.25%. As you can see on the map, there is still a lot of room for them to expand further, with a restaurant gap of 22,000 in North America, 3,000 in Latin America, 13,000 in EMEA, and 27,000 in Asia Pacific. Looking very good. To determine the final valuation of the company, we'll be using a margin of safety. This margin of safety will be based on the financial ratios, the financial health, and the growth of the company, and we'll be using a standard margin of safety of 25%. They can never go below 0%. The margin of safety will either increase or decrease based on the ratios that we're going to look at in just a moment. And the severity that the margin of safety will increase or decrease by will be determined by using a scale. When we're using four colors in a scale, bright red will mean a 5% increase, orange will mean no change, light green will mean a 5% deduction, and bright green will mean a 10% deduction from a margin of safety. When we're using three colors, bright red will mean a 5% increase, orange will mean no change, and bright green will mean a 5% deduction. The first two metrics that we'll be looking at are the EBIT growth and the margin growth. The EBIT has gone up over the years going from almost $1.4 billion in 2015 to $2.2 billion in 2022. The average EBIT growth is 7.8%, meaning no change in the margin of safety in this metric. The margin during this period has gone down slightly, going from 34.38% in 2015 to 34% in 2022. The average margin growth is still 0.3%, but it doesn't qualify for a margin of safety deduction or increase. The next two ratios are the dividend growth and the payout ratio. The dividends have gone up over the years, going from $0.44 cents a share in 2015 to $2.16 a share in 2022. The average dividend growth is 27%, which gives them a 10% deduction in the margin of safety. This with a payout ratio that's sitting at 66.2%, uh, which is no change in margin of safety on this metric. The final two ratios that we'll be looking at are the debt to EBITDA and return on invested capital. To get a debt to EBITDA ratio, we have to take the debt of the company, subtract the cash from it, and divide it by the EBITDA. Out of this, we get the amount of years of EBITDA it takes for the company to pay off all of their debt. For QSR, this is almost 6 years, in this case a 599% debt to EBITDA ratio, which gives them a 5% increase in the margin of safety. The return on invested capital for QSR is sitting at 9.9%, meaning no change in the margin of safety on this metric. Let's go look at the valuation models next to determine the intrinsic value of QSR. The first valuation model that we'll be using is the discounted cash flow model. I've imported the free cash flow of restaurant brands going from 2015 to 2022. The average free cash flow growth during this period was 11.18%. I'm projecting an expected growth rate and a free cash flow of 8% annually over the next 10 years. With this percentage, we can determine the future free cash flow for QSR and determine a terminal year valuation using a perpetual growth rate of 3% and a discount rate of 8.5%. This gives them a sum of free cash flow of $35.5 billion. And to get an equity value, we have to add the cash in equivalents and subtract the, cash, uh, subtract the debt, rather, giving them an equity value of $22.2 billion. And all we have to do to get an intrinsic value out of this model is to divide it by the amount of shares outstanding, giving us a discounted cash flow price per share of $71.83, which is a 7.83% upside out of this model. The second model we'll be using is the dividend discount model. I've imported dividend payouts of QSR going from four years ago to the current year. The average growth rate in their dividends during this period was 4.73% and I'm projecting expected growth rate in all of their future dividends of 4.5%. I'll once again be using a discount rate of 8.5% in this valuation, giving us a dividend discount model price per share of $56.43, which is a 15.3% downside out of this model. 
The third model that we use is the Graham's Revised Valuation Formula. In this model, we take a look at the earnings per share that QSR is generating, the growth rate estimate projected by Wall Street, and the current yield of AAA corporate bonds in relation to the average yield of AAA corporate bonds always sitting at 4.4. And we go by the theory that a company with no growth always is sitting at a PE of 7. And looking at all of these metrics, we get a fair value of $42.25, which is a 36.58% downside of this model. The fourth model that we use is the multiple valuation. In this model, we look at similar companies to QSR and look at their stock price and their earnings per share. This way, we can determine the average PE multiple in the industry, which is sitting at 24.26. All we have to do to get a fair value out of this model is to multiply it by the earnings per share that QSR is generating, which is $3.25 a share, giving us a fair value of $78.85, which is a 18.36% upside of this model. And the last model that we'll be using is the mean reversion theory. In this model, we go by the theory that a company will always trade above or below its mean, and the metrics that we use to determine this are the dividend yield and the P-E ratio. In this case, I've imported the dividend yield of the past 5 years, the average has been sitting at 3.32%, while the current yield is sitting at 3.26%, meaning that it's currently slightly overvalued on this metric. Doing the same with the P-E ratio, the average P-E ratio of the past 5 years has been sitting at 22.25, while the current P-E ratio is sitting at 20.51, indicating that it's currently slightly undervalued on this metric. This gives them a fair value of this model of $68.82, which is a 3.3% upside of this model. If you want to get access to all of the models that I use in my videos, and much more, you can check in the description from my Patreon link. Anyways, getting that self-promotion out of the way, let's go look at the final overview of evaluation next. Looking at our final overview, we've imported the discounted cash flow, discount dividend, grains valuation, the multiple valuation, and a mean reversion theory price per share, giving us an average of $63.64. Without a margin of safety, we would get a downside of almost 4.5%, but we have determined a margin of safety earlier, using a standard margin of safety of 25%, adding 5% for the debt to EBITDA, and deducting it by 10% for the dividend growth, leaving us with a 20% margin of safety. Applying this margin of safety, we get a fair value of $50.91, and with the current price of $66.62, we get a downside of 23.58% out of our valuation. If there are any other companies that you would like to see me cover on this channel, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.